Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through and showing you my top 10 hanging and trailing plants right now, along with some care tips, general info and some fun facts, because you know how much I love a fun fact. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So I've currently got around about 40 different types of hanging and trailing plants in my collection. And I personally just absolutely love the look of them. I feel like it just really helps to create that gorgeous jungly vibe by having plants on different levels, it creates a good dynamic within the space. And also obviously there are some practicalities to it as well. By raising plants up, you just help to free up quite a lot of floor space, which you can use for other things. But if you're like me, you will probably be using for more plants on ground level. And also if you do have pets or small children or anything like that, that are prone to nibbling, then it can just be a good way to raise your toxic plants up and prevent that from happening. So yes, I'm gonna take you through my top 10 currently and tell you a little bit more about them. But before we continue, I just wanted to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, Holzkern. I was genuinely so, so excited when Holzkern reached out to me. They make the most beautiful selection of handcrafted, nature-inspired watches, jewelry. They even do bags and sunglasses, each one being totally unique, made with natural materials and created sustainably. I personally always struggle to find jewellery that I actually like and the thing I love about Holzkern is that although a lot of their stuff is very delicate, it also feels very gender neutral which is perfect for me because I'm definitely not a girly girl, I feel like it suits my style really well and it just feels very earthy. Earthy? Is that the right word? Their whole vibe just feels very me. I went for this gorgeous watch which is made from zebra wood and nacre along with some other beautiful jewellery which you may have noticed in my videos recently. You can get 10% off your Holzkern order by using the code DONATEJUNGLE and 5% of your purchase value will also be automatically split between three wonderful charities, including a reforestation charity, an animal welfare charity and a children's aid charity. I'll leave all the details you need, including my discount code and some more details on the charities in the description box down below. And thank you again to Holzkern for sponsoring today's video. So the first one is a really, really common houseplant, but it's one that I personally think is very underrated. I absolutely love this plant. It is the variegated spider plant. And this one's native to tropical West Africa. It's really, really easy to care for. I would personally say it makes a great beginner plant. And I always bang on about texture in plants because I love different textures, especially when you've got lots of different types of plant next to each other. I like being able to kind of see, I don't know, see the individuality within them. And this one has just got the most beautiful colours and textures. And the great thing about it as well is that it does pop out lots of little babies. So if you're new to propagating plants or you want to add more plants to your home for free, it is just it's kind of like getting a plant and then getting loads of bonus plants. And I know in my last video that I made on my channel, I was talking about how my variegated spider plant had really gone downhill and it wasn't looking good. I basically had just left it to dry out for way too long and it was having loads of issues. And I feel like this is a sign from the universe because my next door neighbours are currently moving out and she sent me a text saying, could I drop around a couple of plants? I know you love plants. And this was one of them. And this was literally on the day that I filmed that video. So although I'm working very hard to bring my other one back to health, it is quite nice to have a lovely, healthy one back in my collection. I think it's just so stunning. And I really, I really struggle to understand why more people don't love this plant. I know some people kind of, I guess maybe because it just looks like a fancy grass. Some people just aren't that interested in it, but I just think it is wonderful. It's super low maintenance. It's really adaptable to different lighting conditions. It's also non-toxic. So if you've got children or pets, this one is absolutely brilliant. It's not gonna, it's not gonna harm anyone. And as I say, if you are kind of new to propagating, or even if you're not, even if you just want more plants, it is a really, really easy one to propagate. 
This one, I probably will detach the babies quite soon. I've got so many spider plant babies currently, but these ones I tend to just propagate straight into water. I'll allow them to root and then when they're really well rooted, I will pop them up again. And so the cycle continues. And the thing that I'm really happy about having just inherited this plant is that I'm not gonna have to do a huge amount of acclimation. The environment in my neighbor's flat is very similar to mine. It gets the same light. We're both on the top floor, so I expect it gets very similar heat as well. So although I've given it a very good pest check and treatment, I'm, I'm not too worried about this one adjusting. It does just tend to adjust very, very quickly anyway. But yeah, as I say, I think it's totally underrated and although it is probably the most common one on the list that I'm going to show you today, it's one that I just cannot rave about enough. I think it's just wonderful and I would fill my house with them if I could. To encourage your spider plants to produce little plantlet babies, it's actually a good idea to let them become slightly root bound as this is when they tend to reproduce more. This also means that despite them being fast growers, they won't need to be repotted as frequently as many other houseplants. And the next one is the red coral cactus and this one's native to Central and South America and I just think it is the most incredible houseplant because as you can see this one is a little bit dehydrated but where it's got sun stressed it's gone so I mean almost bright pink it's just got the most beautiful colour to it. And this is an epiphytic plant, which means that in nature it would typically grow off another plant, like often growing attached to trees or rocks. And for that reason, it does like a really kind of chunky, chunky soil mix to grow well. But it's also a very adaptable plant. I've actually got two red coral cactus in my collection, and this one's been in one of my window boxes, hence why you can see all of the sun stress on it. And the other one's just hanging on my hanging rail and that one doesn't really get any direct sun at all. And they're both growing really, really well, but they've just, they've developed very different forms. They're obviously very different colours because this gorgeous red doesn't happen unless it is getting a lot of sun. But it's just a very adaptable plant. Obviously, you wouldn't just take it from one condition and put it straight into the other. Like if I was to move this one here to my hanging rail and swap the other one to my window box, they probably would go into shock. It does need to be a gradual acclimation process. But this one's tolerance to direct sun has been built up fairly gradually. And I'm so glad that I did it because now I feel like I've got, I can, I can appreciate the plant in both its forms. And that makes me very, very happy. It's also a very low maintenance plant to look after. It really doesn't require much water. I think at the moment I'm probably watering it once every two weeks and this one is in full sun. The important thing to remember with it though is that it is toxic. So again, if you do have children, pets, anything like that, raising it up is probably a good idea. But yeah, it's also a fantastic plant to propagate. It's so ridiculously easy to propagate. You can essentially just cut pretty much any section of the plant, stick it in water, stick it in moss, stick it straight into soil even. It is a cactus and it does propagate very easily straight into soil. I have done it before. So yeah, it's just, it's the most wonderful plant. And I've sent out so many cuttings of this plant to people because it's one that I, I just really want to share. I feel, again, similar to the spider plant, it's a little bit underrated. And although mine is, in the grand scheme of things, relatively small at the moment, it can get huge. I'll try and find a picture and put it on the screen so that you can see. But no, it's capable of trailing right down. And that, I mean, when I first saw a picture of this cactus, I was like, oh my goodness, I need that. So I really hope that now we're in growing season, mine starts to push out some beautiful growth. And I hope it gets to that stage soon because it's such a rewarding plant to grow. And also for a cactus, I think it's a fairly fast grower. I've had this one probably about eight or nine months now. And in the time that I've had it, it has grown dramatically. Even the one that I've got not in full sun has given me a lot of growth as well. So yeah, it's just, it's a fantastic plant. I would highly recommend it. The only thing that you do just have to be a little bit wary of with this plant is over watering because if you do water too much or water when the plant isn't ready for a drink, it can cause the plant to either develop root rot or stem rot where basically all of its leaves will just turn to mush. So if anything, less is more, but if you do like something fairly low maintenance, then it is a very good shout. 
The red coral cactus is also capable of producing beautiful blooms which will then form into berries, commonly referred to as glass beads. These berries contain seeds, meaning that alongside propagation from cuttings, growing more of this plant at home can be very easy to do. And this next one is definitely one of my favourites. This is the Hoya Bella. And I know I've already spoken about texture in plants, but I just love everything about the texture of this plant. Her leaves are just so perfect. It's almost like if you ask somebody to draw a picture of a plant that had only ever seen, like, I don't know, a generic plant, this is the sort of thing that they would draw. She's so robust. She hasn't really given me any issues at all in the time that I've owned her. And she is just a really fast growing Hoya because sometimes Hoyas can be known for being quite slow growing, but this one just grows at the speed of light. It's absolutely crazy. I've taken so many cuttings of this plant in the time that I've had her. I took some around to my neighbours when I first moved in here as a Christmas present. I've given them away to friends for birthdays. She just always bounces back, always continues to give me beautiful, beautiful growth. And I never worry about taking cuttings with this plant because I know that she will just, I mean, she she seems to just grow back overnight. It's, it's ridiculous. But this one's native to Northeast India. She's really resilient. She's really hardy. It's also another one that's non-toxic. So again, if you've got children or pets, it, it doesn't have to be grown up high. Like you could just have it on a surface trailing down. I think that would look quite nice. But yeah, as I say, I propagate this plant a lot. And although you can propagate Hoyas straight into soil, I personally quite like to do water with this one just so that I can watch the root system develop. That is just my personal preference. I say that though, I've actually got a couple of variegated Hoya Bellas in my cabinet. I've got two different types of variegated ones and I'm growing one in perlite and one in sphagnum moss and both have rooted really, really well. So yeah, again, a great beginner plant, very easy to look after, very rewarding to grow, also produces the most beautiful, beautiful flowers. I know Hoyas are known for their amazing blooms, but this one blooms so much more than any of my others. She actually, currently, this is a bad time to be showing you her. Usually she has loads, but actually at the moment she doesn't have any, but she has flowered a lot recently. But yeah, she's just a really, really gorgeous plant. Due to the tropical environment of its natural growing conditions, you can increase the speed of growth in the Hoya Bella by keeping it in warm temperatures with high humidity levels. Regularly taking cuttings will also help to encourage bushiness and fullness in the main plant. And this is one that I raved about a lot recently. This is the Skindapsis Silver Hero, and I love Skindapsis as a genus anyway, but I just think the colour of this one's leaves is just out of this world. It's so bluey, silver, beautiful. It looks so gorgeous hanging up. I've got mine hanging in my window and I just love the way that she looks. She really kind of contrasts my other plants very well. And Skindapsis on the whole are fairly easy to look after. I wouldn't say that this is any more difficult than kind of just like things like the Argoreus, more common types of Skindapsis, but they can sometimes be a little bit fussy with their watering requirements. And they do like to pretty much completely dry out. I usually let mine dry out to about kind of 60, 70% before I water again. But if you let them go completely bone dry, they'll curl very quickly. And if you overwater them, again, they are very susceptible to root rot so I maybe wouldn't say this is a complete beginner plant I mean this is just in my opinion as well obviously different environments different people are going to have different luck with different plants but for me when I was first starting out I don't think this would have been one of the plants that I personally have gone for but this one's native to Southeast Asia and again is very adaptable when it comes to light I found that this one grows really well in my cabinet it's now as I say out of my cabinet by a window it can grow in lower lighting conditions as well. Its growth probably won't be as quick if it's grown in lower light, but it is absolutely possible. And although this one, this so this one's not technically considered toxic, but it is, I know it can be very irritating. I'm pretty sure it contains calcium oxalate. Calcium oxalate, am I saying that right? Basically, you shouldn't eat it. So although it's not technically classified as toxic, I would still kind of say that it is. Um, but no, I love the velvetiness of its leaves. I love how they've got a really kind of very subtle marking to them. I actually, when I first got this plant, wasn't sure if it was a Skindapsis Silver Hero or a Skindapsis Tattoo because they can be quite similar, especially when they're juvenile. But now that it's given me lots of lovely growth, I am pretty 
pretty, I would say 99% certain that it is a silver hero. And again, it's been a very easy one to propagate. Skindapsis can be a little bit difficult to root sometimes for some people. I found that putting an epipremnum or a pothos cutting in with the water when you are rooting it can help to really speed the process up. I also personally root this plant in sphagnum moss if I'm going to propagate it nowadays, and that tends to work very well. I've got some cuttings of it currently propagating in my cabinet and my hope is that at some point soon I'll be able to pop them all back up together and get a really gorgeous full plant going because she's doing very well. I'm happy with how she's growing but as you can see her growth is all currently just on one side and I'd like to just fill her out a little bit more. But yeah, it's one that brings me a lot of joy and I would, I would highly recommend. Each variety of Skindapsis plant has the ability to randomly produce leaves that mimic another cultivar, perhaps explaining why I struggled to ID mine accurately at first. The reason for this hasn't been studied in depth, but means this genus of plant is full of unexpected surprises. And then this next one is the Hoya gracilis. It was previously classified as Hoya memoria, and I just think it is such a beautiful, beautiful Hoya. I love Hoyas in general. I love how robust and waxy they are. And this is a plant that I actually thought I had in my collection for quite a long time, but it was actually a pubicolix Hawaiian. I know there was a big kind of apparently a big mix up a couple of years ago and lots of plants were sent out with the name Hoya gracilis when they weren't actually a Hoya gracilis. So from that point I was kind of on a bit of a mission to bring a true gracilis into my collection and this is now one of two. I've got two Hoya gracilis and I don't really care about having duplicates in my collection if I love a plant. Like, I just, I, I love the shape of its leaves. I love how it looks. It's so easy to care for. This one's native to Indonesia as well. And it is, I mean, Hoyas as a genus do tend to be quite easy to look after. Tends to be. There are a few that are drama queens. But this one has been so low maintenance. I water it. I've gone like a month without watering this plant before and it's never kicked up a fuss. It's never complained. It can survive in really low light. It can survive in higher lighting conditions. It's just a fantastically adaptable plant. So I feel like this would be one that would be suited to pretty much anyone's home. Again, it's not even fussy about things such as humidity. It does help, especially with propagation. It helps if the humidity levels are higher, but it's not absolutely essential. And it is also another plant that's non-toxic. Hoyas as a genus, I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying all Hoyas are non-toxic, but this one is definitely non-toxic. So pet safe, child safe, all the good things. And you can grow this plant on a trellis. I've seen quite a lot of people trellising it, but mine hasn't started to tendril yet, so I haven't done that. For the time being, she does just seem to be growing really happily in a hanger. And I've got this one actually just above where I'm filming now, so this spot doesn't get any direct sun, but as you can probably see, it just gets a good level of bright indirect light, and the plant seems really happy. So yeah, I have also propagated this plant many, many times. I've taken lots of cuttings and this type of Hoya, uh, like this is just, again, my personal way of doing things, but this type of Hoya, I do propagate straight into soil and it roots so quickly. I've had no issues at all. It's always done really well. Hoyas, unfortunately, although on the whole, they are not very susceptible to pests. When I say pests, I mean pests such as spider mites, thrips, kind of like the more common houseplant pests but they are very, very susceptible to mealybugs, which is such a pain. If you catch them early, they're very easy to deal with, but if you don't keep a close eye on your plants, then they can get out of hand very quickly. I did a video on this recently where mealybugs had basically just infested my Hoya crinkleate. But yeah, mealybugs do really love the kind of more succulent, robust plants. So it's definitely something to be aware of. But apart from that, it's a very easy to grow, very rewarding, very beautiful plant that again, I would highly recommend. Some types of Hoya are more prone to tendrils than others. The Hoya gracilis tends to have a more compact growth structure, meaning it's a fantastic plant to hang or trail. It's also an epiphytic plant, meaning that in its natural habitat, it would grow off the forest floor and attach itself to other vegetation. And another all-time favourite in my collection is the Lapismium bolivianum, and this one has got so kind of big and wild 
it's kind of hard to show you her, I'll have to put some clips in, but this one's native to the Bolivian rainforest and it is, it's a jungle cactus, so it does enjoy quite high levels of humidity, it just helps to keep the plant really conditioned and really healthy, which is something a lot of the time when you say cactus people don't necessarily think about, but if you're like me and you've got lots of tropical plants then it's absolutely fantastic because if you take a desert cactus for example and put it into a very high humidity environment it's going to be more likely to rot whereas this one will just thrive so you might notice if you've watched my houseplant tours a lot of the cacti in my collection are jungle cacti for that reason because i like being able to kind of keep them all in the same environment and this one, although it's technically listed as not toxic, apparently it can induce vomiting if you eat a lot of it. I basically wouldn't recommend eating any of your houseplants, to be completely honest. But it's probably one that you would want to keep up high anyway, just because of how wild and crazy it grows. And this one actually was a lot fuller up until recently. I gave it a really big chop back. I did some propagating of the plant just because it was literally taking over. It completely blocks out my window. And I thought I would just like to get, get some more sections of this plant going. So I, I'm currently rooting them in water. I'm sure there's other ways that I could do it, but water's worked really well. Some of the cuttings I've taken have got amazing roots on them. And it is also capable of producing beautiful pink and white flowers. Sadly, mine's never actually flowered for me in the time that I've had it and I've had it for a couple of years now and I'm not entirely sure why it hasn't flowered it's been giving me beautiful growth it seemed very happy it's been in I think all of the right conditions but I haven't seen any flowers as of yet so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that maybe this year it will flower but I've seen pictures of them and they just look stunning but no, I always refer to this one as my head of hair plant for obvious reasons, because it's it's kind of, it almost looks like dreadlocks. It's just, I, I love the structure of its growth. It's just amazing. But yeah, it's one that brings me so much joy. Again, texture in plants, it just ticks all the boxes for me. It's very unusual. I just, yeah, I just love it. Despite being a cactus, the Lepismium bolivianum is spine free and smooth to the touch. It's commonly known as the forest cactus and when grown in the right conditions can be much faster to grow than the majority of cacti. It's very drought tolerant and tends to deflate slightly when it's ready for a drink. And then this one is looking a little bit curly. I did just give it a water, but it, it was a little bit dehydrated, but it is the Cebu Blue. And if you live outside of the UK, if you're in the States or Canada, for example, this is probably quite a common plant for you. But for some reason over here in the UK, it just hasn't been very easily accessible. Like now, like in the last couple of months, I've seen lots of places starting to sell it, but before that it was it was a real mission trying to find this plant and i actually got this from my friend emma who'd grown it from cuttings and i haven't actually propagated it yet just because it's still it's still a little bit sparse it has got this kind of very long bit going down here so i might take some cuttings again similar to what i was doing for the skindapsis silver hero just to kind of help it fill out a little bit but I just love the bluey silveriness of its leaves. I think they are so gorgeous. And if you look at this one here, you can see it's got little fenestrations starting to appear. And you can also grow this plant on a moss pole. It does very well when grown on a moss pole. If you're trying to really get it to size up and fenestrate, that's probably the best way. <coughs> oh, there's someone at the door. That was just my predatory mites arriving and it says live insects on the packaging and my postman thought that was absolutely hilarious. Um, but yes, also I was going to say for all of these plants, for all of my plant collection in general, I am using biological pest control now instead of chemicals. I am using predatory mites uh, and I get them on subscription and I will link them down below if anybody's interested. Um, but where was I with the Cebu Blue? Yeah, as I say, I think uh, if you grow it on a moss pole, then you can get it to really size up and achieve those kind of gorgeous fenestrated leaves. But it is an epipremnum and it can grow absolutely fine like this as well. And I personally just really like having it as a hanging plant. This one is unfortunately toxic though, so it is a good idea to keep it raised. Again, if you've got children or pets or anything like that. But I love it. I love it like this. I think it looks so pretty. And next to my other plants, it just looks so gorgeous and bluey. And I just love the different kind of shades of green along with the textures. And this one makes me really happy. And it's very, very rewarding. I know I'm saying they're all rewarding, but this one is incredibly rewarding to grow.
As you can probably tell from the clips in this video, the Sea Blue Blue is very good at letting you know when it's ready for a drink. Its leaves will typically curl and the plant will flop, letting you know it needs water. That being said, curling leaves on this plant can occasionally be associated with overwatering, so make sure you're allowing the soil to dry out at about 90% before you rewater. And another bluey silver one that I absolutely love is the Hoya Croniana Super Silver. And this actually isn't the best light to show you it in. I feel like it's not really kind of doing the plant justice, but it's just got the most incredible splashes and shades of shades of kind of silvery blue all over its leaves. And because its leaves are quite robust and waxy as well, they almost sparkle when they catch the light. It's just, it's just stunning. I love this plant more than anything. And it's another Hoya that's also very quick to grow compared to some of my others. I don't know why when I first got this plant I thought it would be quite slow growing but I've again I've chopped it back a lot in the time that I've had it but I, I've had it probably just over a year now and I got it when it was only about that big and there have been points where it's grown all the way down to there. Oh hello Yuli, please don't come through the plant. Good girl. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this one's also native to the Philippines. I can't remember if I said that about the CB Blue. I'm not sure if I got distracted when the postman came, but that one, both of these plants are native to the Philippines. Um, and again, this is a Hoya. This one is also non-toxic, so fantastic if you've got pets or children or blah, 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 blah. Um, but I propagate this plant all the time purely because it does grow so quickly. I've got cuttings literally dotted all around my flat. I have propagated straight into soil with it before, but I tend to just like doing it in water. Again, I just really like watching the roots form. And I am also just starting to play about with semi-hydroponic growing with this plant as well. I've put some of my recent propagations into Lechuza Pond and they are doing very well in that. So at some point, I think I might change out this plant substrate and grow it semi-hydroponically as a full plant, but I'm not entirely sure yet. But yeah, I think it's just beautiful, very robust, very easy to grow, very, very low maintenance, and also incredibly adaptable with light as well. This plant has grown in all sorts of conditions in the time that I've had it. It's grown in full sun, it's grown in very low light. Before I moved to my place here, I was living in a basement with pretty much no natural light and this one did amazingly. So yeah, I would say again, a fantastic beginner plant. Although the Hoya Croniana Super Silver is more than capable of surviving in lower lighting conditions, chances are the growth it produces in lower light won't be quite so splashy and silvery in colour. Therefore, to keep the beautiful colour from reverting to green, it's best grown in bright indirect to high light. And another one that I know is probably more of a common plant, but I think I think it's a popular house plant for a reason. It is the Epipremnum Marble Queen, the Pothos Marble Queen. And I just think this plant is wonderful. It's so easy. It grows like a weed. I love the variegation on its leaves. They're so kind of splashy and brushed, almost like they've been painted on. And I love just like the standard golden pothos as well. I've got loads of them in my collection. I am constantly propagating that plant, but there's just something about the Marble Queen that just gets me. And I really don't do a lot to this plant at all. At the moment, considering how warm it is as well, and the fact that she's up high, I'm only watering her like once every two weeks and she's very good at letting you know when she needs a water. She'll kind of curl her leaves and it will be quite obvious and won't go downhill in the same way as something like the Skindap Silver Hero if you do just let her dry out a little bit too much. It's a plant that's very good at bouncing back. And I know I always bang on about checking the soil and everything in your house plants and monitoring the soil to make sure you get the right balance. And although I do do that with this plant, most of the time I can kind of tell what she needs just by looking at her, because as I say, she is very good at letting you know what's going on. But again, similar to the CB Blue, this one is an Epipremnum. It is unfortunately toxic. So again, raising up is a really good idea. This one I've currently got on top of my fridge and she seems really, really happy there. Hasn't given me any issues at all. Um, it's native to French Polynesia as well. It's very adaptable when it comes to things like humidity. I, I just think it's an all-round brilliant plant. I think it looks gorgeous and also because it is technically classed as an invasive species in its natural habitat, because it is an invasive species, I think that does just make it very hardy and easy to grow because they're constantly trying to kill it off and for people that are not necessarily great with plants that can be fantastic because it tends to be very resilient 
but yeah I love it I adore it I will always have this type of plants in my collection I could actually I was going to say my dream is to at some point get them covering the ceiling completely so that I've just got a canopy of green and I think considering the rate at which she grows that should be that should be quite a doable achievement to do. <laughs> Also commonly known as Devil's Ivy, due to the fact that it's so hard to kill, this epipremnum can also be used to help other plants develop roots when propagating. It's a quick plant to root in water and naturally emits a rooting hormone, so simply add a cutting of this to your props and watch them root in no time. And finally, this is one that is 100%, it's, it's one of my all time favorite plants and I've spoken about this one so much in the past. It's the Peperomia Hope. And again, I should have I should have given it a water a couple of days ago, but I only watered it about 10 minutes before this video. And as you can see, it's a little bit deflated. It's a little bit curly. Technically, I shouldn't have allowed this plant to dry out as much as I did, but it is so ridiculously warm in my flat at the moment. My my watering schedule is just completely, completely crazy at the moment. So it is a little bit dehydrated, but nevertheless, I just think it's wonderful. I love the kind of little circular succulent leaves that it's got. They almost just look like little pennies. And I've said before, it almost gives me Hoya vibes. It's not a Hoya, but I think because it is a more succulent Peperomia, I just, yeah, I just think it's amazing. Texture, everything about it is just great. Peperomia are also, I think, again, I'm writing saying as a genus, non-toxic. This one is definitely non-toxic and it's native to Mexico and tropical America. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying. If I got that wrong, I will put the correct answer on the screen. Um, but again, it's just been very low maintenance, very easy to care for. As I say, it is looking a bit deflated and unhappy at the moment, but I have all the faith that this plant will bounce back. It's just very, it's, it's a very drought tolerant plant. It stores a lot of water in its leaves. So if you do miss a watering now and again, it's very forgiving. And it's also very, very fast growing. I got this one for, I think about one or two pounds as a tiny baby plant about nine months ago now, maybe a little bit longer, maybe about a year ago. And in that time, I've taken lots of cuttings of it. It's grown, it's grown ridiculously fast. And a couple of months ago, I just took some cuttings at the bottom and already you can see it's starting to push out lots of lovely new growth points and it does seem really happy. It's just very adaptable, great with different lighting conditions. It lived in full sun in my mum's conservatory and here it doesn't get any direct light at all, but it's still grown well. It's just a really, a really lovely, really kind of joyful plant, I think. I don't know why, there's just something about looking at this plant and how kind of, I don't know, like bobbly and it feels like it's full of character. And I just, I, I think it's great and it makes me very happy. Similarly to the Hoya Bella, regularly taking cuttings of the Peperomia Hope helps to encourage growth further up the plant, making it appear much fuller and bushier and naturally activating new growth points on the main stems. But yeah, those are those are my current top 10. It was very genuinely very hard to decide for this video because I've got so many more that I love. So if you would like a part two to this video, then please do let me know down below. Also, again, thank you so much to Holes Kern for sponsoring this video. I will leave all of the details you need in the description box below for that. I am also gonna be doing a giveaway with Holes Kern next month. So keep an eye on my videos because you might be able to win some very exciting things. But yeah, do let me know as well what some of your favourite hanging and trailing plants are because I always like to get inspired from you guys and potentially add new things to my collection. But if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.